suit up, strap in, warm the tires, and leave on yellow. Time for the Mitsu Times Podcast. Presented by MitsuTimes.org, the home of the fastest Mitsubishi cars. With your host, Josh. Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Josh with Mitsu Times. Today, my special guest is Rich, better known as Race Car Richie. How are you doing today, sir? I am doing great, Josh. Um, you know, just kicking back, enjoying the South. Absolutely. I know it's it's got to be nice and warm down there. Uh, I think it was about 95 today. It was, a, it was yeah. a little hot. It was a little hot. I didn't really get to do anything on the car because it was just too brutal. Yeah. It's been raining here the last couple of days, but I think we're we're at the tail end of it, so that's good. Yeah, I think I think we're due for a nice rain tomorrow. Hey, cool you off a little bit. That's it. Well, man, you uh, you know, you've been making this great Eclipse content. I for a second uh, at the end of last year, I thought this thing might have kicked your butt. You might have thrown in the towel, but but you're coming back, and, and you're not going to let this car beat you. And you've already been back out there making some passes again. Yeah, man. Um, you know, I was living up in New York, and uh, I had to put everything on pause because we were in the process of moving. So we moved from New York to South Carolina back in, I don't know, like the middle of January. So the car was just sitting in another storage unit down here. And, uh, you know, once we got all settled down, I said we got to get this thing out I, I i have to go to the track so i started looking at some events and i said okay darlington dragway's got an event coming up in two weeks and uh wiped the dust off and we sent it heck yeah man so this you know if there's people out there they haven't seen this car this thing is just absolutely incredible build why don't you tell us a little bit about the setup on it all right so first off i got the car completely stock um it was untouched um it's a 99 mitsubishi eclipse gsx and it's an automatic so for all of you auto guys um i'm on your side man <laughs> uh, it's not that i hate stick but the the auto is where you're going to make the the power and the time that's right but uh so as far as what's been done to the car i have uh it's a 99 block so it's a seven bolt block with Howard I-beam rods, uh, ARP, I believe it's 6,000 rod bolts, uh, Weisco HD, um, 1,400 pistons, the, you know, the E85 ones with, I think it's 9.1 to 1 compression ratio and polished and balanced crank. It is a stock crank. And then as far as the head, it is a 1G head with plus 1 millimeter intake and exhaust valves it's got dual super tech 96 pound springs in it with uh solid ble lifters oh wow um that's yeah so that's uh you know it's i'm not a big fan of the solid lifters they're they're a little noisy and i kind of have to constantly adjust them and you know just make sure they're tight so nothing falls apart um the head gasket is a new gasket that I'm trying from, uh, I forgot the name of the company. I, I would have to go back and check. But the old head, head gasket I was using was a Titan head gasket. And it was a full copper gasket with stainless steel rings built into the gasket. Mm. And that only lasted me till about 50 pounds of boost. Outside of 50 pounds of boost, I ended up blowing uh, one of the water jacket ports. And that's all she wrote. So this new gasket is made by the same company, which I think is SCE Gaskets. Um, I just forgot the specific name, but it's a composite gasket, and it's got its own individual stainless steel firing rings for each cylinder. Oh, wow. So that's, that's kind of the best way I can explain it. But that head gasket has held about six passes so far of about 53 to 55 pounds of boost with no issues. Um, the, the head studs are boosted performance half inch head studs. I believe they're the L19s. Um, and then, I mean, that's pretty much it for the motor. You know, as if you've seen pictures of the car, it's got a Magnus intake manifold, uh, force performance, 6875 turbo. It's got a hundred shot of nitrous to get off the line. Um, a 
basic 300M uh, transfer case, the three and a half inch drive shaft shop drive shaft, a mechanical fuel pump. It runs on E85, 2200 cc fuel injectors. Uh, what else? We got a 4500 to 4800 stall torque converter from Precision Industries. Uh, DSM Link V3 full wow. on a yeah it's it's on a what is it a, a win a, a Windows tablet so if you get like <laughs> one of those little eight inch Windows tablets yeah. from back in the day yeah so I, I I hooked it up to a Windows tablet so DSM Link just kind of runs and then I made each um, uh, what is it like the RPMs the boost all that stuff for the data logging I made them very big. So when you actually, you can use it as a screen and see your parameters oh, as cool. real time. Uh, it's kind of clever. That's as smart. far as the, as far as the rear end, it's completely stock rear axles, rear uh, differential, stock front axles, um, and then the rims are some eBay like MST eBay wheels that were like four hundred bucks for the set. They so, look good for eBay and then wheels. The, uh, yeah, they listen. I I was looking at the eBay wheels and I was just I wanted to get something that had a decent amount of meat, I guess you say, or a decent amount of metal, you know, holding the spokes together or holding it to the hub that way they didn't just explode on me the first time I launched the car. Right. Uh, it's got a uh, Carbonetics carbon doors and Hoosier DOT tires, DOT slicks. Like yeah. We got an eight and a half cert cage so it's good for eight and a half seconds and currently i'm waiting on my parachute mount from boosted fabrication heck yeah you didn't need that that's yeah well i'm going over 150 now so i'm at that i'm at that limit and hopefully we're going faster this year so <laughs> i believe the fastest was like a, an 897 at 150 but i have been a 9.0 at 154 don't ask me why it was faster at the top end it's just that's how it happened yeah especially with the auto right. that's that's sometimes how it happens yeah but it was it was real consistent at the 9.0 that day but the head gasket was also on its way out and yeah i was kind of revving out the motor to 92.50 that day so i was definitely getting up there well rich let me ask you what what was it that drew you to the 2g platform in the first place Come on, man. Everybody knows that. It's the Fast and the Furious. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's uh, the answer for almost all 2G guys, for sure. It, that's it. It's uh, It was the Fast and the Furious, and I think... Do you remember what year that movie came out in? I want to say 01. 01, okay. So since 01, I've been obsessed with that car, and then I got my first GSX back in... Uh, what was it? 2012. It was a, a 95 automatic, and that was like that silver color, mm. and it had a 90, it had a 97, 98 like front bumper headlights and the rear bumper. So it was the 2GB setup on it, and that was kind of the car that I learned the whole platform on. You know, the 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 whole ignition system, the whole transmission system, the drive lines, the motor, how everything operates with it. Uh, I found dsm tuners and i just got obsessed with that website and asked every you know question that a kid knows you know that shouldn't ask you know it's yep. uh, one of those things why isn't my car starting <laughs> you know and everybody just kind of craps on cra craps on you a little bit so that's where it started um and then this red one is now the third gsx auto that i've owned and the first one that's been in the eights like yeah so I know you said you bought this car, uh, or you picked it up rather, completely bone stock. Did you have, since you had two before that, did you have any original goals? Like was was eights already in your head when you picked it up? No, um, being the fastest was. That that's I like what that. I wanted to build. I wanted to. My goal still is to be the fastest GSX out there. I just don't really have the. Um, the friends that can help me get there. Yeah. So that's kind of the problem is I'm doing it all by myself. But I feel you. I had the the 95 GSX I got in 2012. I ended up selling that, you know, years later. Then in 2015 is when I got the red one. 
So the red one, I had, you know, some cams. I had the assembling for it. I got some nonsense stuff for it, but I never put it on the road. Then I slowly started ripping it apart. And I started saying, let's rip the interior out. Let's get the motor out. And, you know, that's kind of where it started. And then while that car was being built in the garage at the time, I, I got my hands on a 96 GSX all-wheel drive um, automatic that I made my daily. So at one point, I actually owned two of these things. That's a, that's a bold move. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, if, for, for, for me, the one thing I learned growing up is try not to ghetto rig it, just fix it, yeah. you know? Do it right. Just buy it new. Don't buy used stuff. You know, the first thing I did was a boost leak test, got rid of every, you know, replaced all the gaskets and just made the car reliable because it was my only car. Yeah. But the red one, the goal was always to make that thing just a, a bad mofo drag car. Heck yeah. That's, that's exactly what I like to hear. So you've had this one for a little while, it sounds like. Have you had uh, uh, any different setups on it than the one that you have now that, that you really liked? Nothing that worked, okay. I should say. Um, when, I first started, when I first started collecting parts, there were some things that I changed out, such as I got, you know, like a, a set of eagle rods. And I got a, uh, what is it, eagle rods and an eagle crank. And then I found out, hey, don't use that eagle crank. It's going gonna, it's gonna to break on you. Don't use those rods because you're just not going to be able to make enough power. So I ended up selling those and just going with an OEM crank. And I picked up Howard I-beam rods, uh, which at the time I should have sold those and got aluminum. But again, you don't know. Right. Um, that was kind of collection of parts. But I always bought what I wanted to to use with the car. Like, I'm not going to get electric fuel pumps. I just went straight and got the mechanical fuel pump. You know, two two really good electric fuel pumps at the time. You know, they didn't have the Walbro 450s and stuff like that like they do now. But yeah. two electric pumps were the same price as the mechanical pump. So I got a mechanical pump and just kind of came up with, a, you know, an invention that worked off of the engine mount and a belt that was you know hooked up to the pump and a pulley that was basically mounted to the cam gear so that's kind of like just something like that was what came about after i got the mechanical pump i just had no idea how i was going to mount it yeah and we hear a lot of people then, on this uh, podcast say you know you buy once cry once don't don't buy go yes. ahead and buy the the biggest yeah. and the baddest yeah. Now, don't get me wrong. I had absolutely no blueprints of how I wanted to make, you know, how I was going to build this car. I didn't I didn't sit down and say, oh, this turbo is going to work with my car. No, I just went out and bought a freaking massive T6 Borgwarner and it was just too big, you know, and I found that out later on after it was on the car and all that stuff. It just it, it was just too big and it just it was it didn't work. Yeah. So that's like one of those instances of I, I bought and then I cried. <laughs> well, sometimes you got to learn the hard way. Yeah. But now we're, now the car's coming together a little bit and uh, I'm hoping the next time I go out to the track, I'm going to turn up the two step and have a full bottle of nitrous. And I'm hoping to rip that thing. Heck yeah. Well, normally at this part, I would ask uh, if you could start over and do this build all over again, what you do with the same, but it sounds like you've already, you already know what you would I, change. I know exactly what I would change. Yeah. 100%. But I guess, you know, sometimes making those mistakes is what, you know, helps you learn the most. Yeah. You know, it's uh, it, it comes down to a lot of people that make those kind of mistakes don't really have the friends around them mm -hmm. that know what they're doing. Yeah. You know, they're not... They're not a, a guy that bought an Eclipse because their friend has a thousand horsepower one and they can go to their friend and say, Hey, I have money and I want to do what you did to your car and then just copy them, you know? Right. So in my aspect, all my friends were always coming to me for things. And that's why I had to learn some things the hard way along the, the, the project of this. Yeah. Well, Rich, I want to, uh, you know, you've had had some ups and you've had some downs with this car for sure. 
I, I want to know what it is about this car that keeps you motivated to keep working on it, keep putting money into it, and keep taking it out to the track and, and, and you know, pushing it, giving it all it's got. Well, the feeling of I got this far, why am I going to stop now? That's kind of the first feeling that hits me. Mm-hmm. And then now I have a son that is two years old, and now I'm using the let's go out as a family excuse to go to the track with the car. Heck yeah. You know? So it, it, it started off as uh, I would love this car to be really fast, and then I started building it, and I'm like, well, why am I going to stop? You know, funds, you know, throughout life, your fun, you know, the amount of money you make changes, so things get on hold, and then, oh, wow, I got a big check, and then you throw it all at your project car um and then i just i just didn't stop and it's only going to get better i'm going to try to get a you know a new computer management system i'd like to concrete fill the block get aluminum rods uh 3000 gt rear with the axles uh you know the full blinged out um transfer case and uh you know hopefully be able to get into the sevens and and run with, you know, Rich Ung and, uh, you know, Aaron Gregory and everybody. Cause I, I think, I think that's really where my, my goal is, is setting yeah. is to just be that fast. But I don't know if I can afford to be that fast all the time. <laughs> so there, there might be, there might be some type of limit of saying, Hey, look, I don't make the kind of money these guys make. So maybe it's best if my goal is going to be, to stay at the 850 class yeah. and then just always just dial the car in for a perfect 850 every time and then just say, that's it. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely a reason, right, that, that those guys only race a handful of times per year. Because that's all you can do. Right. The, the, the auto, I should say the automatics, the automatic transmissions are not there yet. They're not. They're getting closer but the reliability of them to run multiple passes like the stick shift uh, transmission is just not quite there yet. That, that's where it gets a little bit harder is because the transmission just is uh, kind of falling behind a little bit. For sure. But we are, I mean, like you said, we are seeing, you know, Circle D is about to come out with their adjustable converter. Kigley's working on yep. a, a planetary fix. And I think yep. we're going to see um, the, the autos get much, much faster. And I can't wait. Much more reliable. Yep, that's all we need is just those uh, extra components so we can, you know, so these these faster guys, they can launch the car harder. Yep. They can put more power into it. They can, you know, get that converter to stop exploding halfway down the track, you know, getting those planetaries to be straight cut, and not, you know, and just be a better material because, uh, you know, we're running out of parts. That's what it's coming down to. For sure. It's way harder to find these things. Yeah. Shout out to the uh, folks still making parts for these cars. Yeah, and uh, unfortunately, a lot of this stuff is new. Yep. You know? Well, Rich, let's talk about uh, when you broke into the 8s for the first time. You was on that current setup that you're on now, correct? Yes. So after, you know, let's say the struggles, how did it feel to get that first 8-second pass and, and to finally kind of get where you was hoping to get? Um, wow. So the pass before that eight second pass was just another 10, 10, you know, mid 10 pass. Um, and then I, you know, tried it with the nitrous and the car literally skipped the nines and went straight to an eight ninety seven. <laughs> so to, to, to struggle in the tens for so long, because you're working out the stupid things you're working out, you know, boost leaks because you had a cheap manifold or, you know, the, the, the turbo's not spooling properly or crap, man. I left, I, I should have filled up my nitrous bottle before I came out here. Um, but when, when that happened, I was just such in disbelief when I got the ticket. That's what it was. When, when, when I got the ticket and I, I filmed the whole thing. So I, I go down the end of the track I'm coming back around. I stop at the booth. I take the ticket from the lady and I tell the camera, I'm not going to look at this until I, I'm parked at, at the at the truck. And I parked and I looked at the ticket and you could just see my expression was just absolutely like just it was so relieving that yeah. the car worked. Like, that's all I can say. It's just like an oh, my God, feeling of just 
ultimate ex- excitement and just like disbelief, but at the same time, a relieving feeling of it finally works. Yeah. And I mean, you know, I, I'm speaking on your behalf. I, I'm not, I don't have the same, we're not, we're not the same person, but in eight, nine, seven puts you at 18th on the all time two G list. I mean that to, to be on, even on the top 20 list with some of the biggest names that have ever set behind the wheel of one of these cars. I mean, that's just an amazing, like almost an out of body kind of experience of, wow, this is, this is really, really cool now. Yep. That's it. That's why I'm saying this year, I'm just gonna, you know, I just got to dial in that launch um, to the point where I don't break the rear and if I can get a good launch in the car, I think I could be somewhere in the 880s, possibly 70s. Heck yeah. 870s that rear put end you is in the built, top 10. That would be cool. And then once that bottom, the, once that rear end is built, I just need to make one pass that, that makes it the car really a good time and then put it away for a while until I can save up to build a rear for it. <laughs> just a little but, bit at a time. Um, yeah, it's just... Unfortunately, I'm, I'm, I'm at that point with the car where everything that I want to do to it is a minimum of $1,000 just for the part. For sure, yeah. I mean, even, even you know, you talk about torching a head or something. I mean, you're, you're now you're looking at over three grand to get back, back on the track. So it's, right. it's one of those right. things where you really – you're putting your ball on the roulette table and spinning it and just hoping it gets your number. Yeah. Yep. And I'll, I'll definitely tell you, you know, the machine work is – I do a lot of the stuff on the car myself. Like mm. 95% of the stuff on, done on that car, I did. The 5% that I didn't do was the machine work to the motor and assembling of the motor because I just wanted to get it done, uh, you know, the by a top dog machinist. Right. Um, and then the actual TIG welding of the roll cage. I cut it, I notched it, and it came pre-bent. And then I just, you know, I put the plates on the floor and I, TIG, uh, I tack welded the cage together, brought it to a roll cage shop for them to make sure it was straight, flush, and everything was good. And then they ran the beads. So I saved a bunch of money on that. Heck yeah. um, and even down to the, the transfer case, I did all that myself. I sent out the necessary parts to Liberty Gears. They did the, um, I guess, you know, they did what they needed to do. They sent me the gears back, and I rebuilt the transfer case. So instead of spending, you know, $1,100 on the transfer case from somebody else, it was only, I think, about, like, 550 Oh, wow. Okay. Right. So it, that's what makes the difference is the labor. If you're going to if you're gonna do your own wiring, you're going to save $2,000 by having somebody else do it. Yeah. And the transmission, too. You know, I ripped that transmission apart a few times, and I built that transmission myself. I did all the valve body mods to it. I did, uh, you know, I rebuilt it with new clutch packs and seals and uh, everything done to that car I did myself. That's awesome. That, that makes you, you and the car, almost one single unit. That's it. That makes us one single unit. So now we just want to go faster. Yep. This episode of the Mitsu Times podcast is brought to you by Haltech. After 35 years in the business, Haltech continues to be an industry leader in engine management and performance automotive electronics. Whether you're sliding sideways in a turbo drift car or pulling high gear in a 250 mile an hour pro mod, Haltech has you covered with their award winning fuel and ignition control products. Their flagship Nexus R5 combines the functionality of a PDM, wideband controller, and engine management all in one state of the art vehicle control unit. Powered by the user friendly NSP software, Haltech gives you ultimate control over your race car with built-in Wi-Fi and oscilloscope functionality. Haltech helps power the world's quickest 4G63 powered dragster, 4G63 all-wheel drive 5-speed, 4G63 all-wheel drive auto, and 4G63 front-wheel drive cars on the planet. They can help you unlock the power. Check out all their products at Haltech.com. Find them on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Haltech ECU. So what's the goals for this year, Rich? I mean, do you have a number goal, or do you just want to yeah, hit so a couple races? That's kind of the whole thing. I just bought a draggy. So uh, my, my buddy Brian, which you 
uh, I don't know, some people have probably seen in my YouTube videos. Um, yeah, I think I've seen a, him before. Yep, he's got a black GSX making about 750. Yep. And I'm not going to tell you what he's done to the car over the winter, but this year he should be going somewhere in the eights. Let's just say oh, that nice. if, if everything goes to plan. Um, he's got – he maxed out his credit cards for this stuff, you know. <laughs> Let, let's just say that. he's uh, He's got some big things coming. So I'm hoping that me and him can stay together and compete in 850 classes. That's that's my goal for this year. But he's uh, he shot me over the idea of, hey, bro, just get a draggy. And I said, that's perfect. Because if I'm going to be doing these no prep events, I need to know what the car is running. I need right. to know what it's doing uh, because there's no – there's no computer system on the back of a track. Right. And I'm hoping that I can get into at least one event this year that uses a track or at least get and do um, a test and tune on a full quarter mile track this year. Um, and I would love to bring it up to Ohio. Yeah, we'd just, love to have you. Shame. It, it's just, it, it's a little bit of a shame that I moved down to South Carolina, so that kind of doubles the time to get up there. Yeah. Uh, it's It'll be worth your drive, though. I, I promise you that. Yes. Um, I, I know the motor, the motor can do an 850 class, but the rear end cannot. The only 850 class is a DCT transmission only class. Which is uh, manual? Uh, GTRs and oh, really? like the dual, yeah, dual, dual clutch transmission cars. So I, I don't even know what, like, I haven't done a lot of, I have not done a lot of research on the, the shootout because I'm like, I'm not competing in it. And as much as I would love to go, I want to do all my research when I'm ready for it. Yeah, for sure. I, I mean, you, I wanna... you would be more like street eliminator, street 32 kind of, kind of area, which I mean, it's very competitive class. It's Mitsubishi versus the world, uh, in street right. 32. So that, that's, that's a good, that's one. probably, yeah, that's probably what I'd be, you know, boosted, uh, boosting performance and rich Ong and all of them. And Aaron Gregory, they're all in uh, quick 32. Oh, they're the quick 32. Yeah, which, okay. I mean, you could definitely compete in, too. It's just, uh, you know, there's six and <laughs> low seven-second cars the in there. I'll be the slowest. I'll be the slowest in the quick 32. But, I mean, if you don't, if you don't, uh, you know, they're going to let you do qualifying passes. And if you don't qualify, right. then, you know, Street 32 or Street Eliminator. Street Eliminator doesn't have a turbo limit, so uh, that's certainly going to be a fast class this year. That Yeah, that probably would be what I'd be in is the no limit. Yeah. There's... Probably not a lot of people out there like you that that could find a DSM that is, uh, you know, pretty well unmolested. But let's say that someone out there they had they have a two G, and uh, they're just kind of getting started on their build. What advice would you give them for their build, uh, so that they can avoid some of the mistakes that you might have made over the years buying parts and, and trying different stuff out? Find a car. Well, I, I would say if if. First of all, figure out what you want to do with the car. That's the very first thing. Do you want to keep it stock? Do you want to circuit race? Do you want to uh, drag race? Or listen, if you even want to drift with it, that's the first thing you want to figure out what you want to do with your car. After you figure that out, figure out what, I, I guess, uh, you know, like who who is your idol among these classes? Mm -hmm. And then take a piece of paper and write out everything you know about that car and copy it. <laughs> that's, that's the ultimate advice I can give anybody is just copy what somebody else is doing. That way, you know, you could do it right the first time and it will be the most financial, you know, benefit of doing it that way. Yeah. I mean, go on Mitsu times and figure out what turbo people are running. And get exactly. yourself one and of the turbos. automatics. The automatics are way different than the stick shifts when it comes to turbo sizes and all that stuff. So if you get an automatic GSX, talk to people who have automatics and say, hey, I just want to make 500 horsepower, but I want it to be a very, very reliable daily. Okay, what's the budget? And then you talk to the person that has a very similar setup. You find somebody that has a similar setup. You talk with them and then... You know, like somebody like me, if you wanted to have something somewhat reliable at 800 or at eight, at 850, I will say this is exactly what's done to my car. This is what I would change to make it more reliable. And then that person now has a straight path to just 
going here from point A to point B, get everything they need, and they can look it all up, do all the research, figure out what the price is, figure out what it's going to cost to do, and they have a, a straight shot. So you're not going to spend double in the failures, I guess you can say. But I would say uh, if anybody can get their hands on it, man, just keep it. Keep that car for the rest of your life and just <laughs> fix it and keep it pristine. Yep. I, I think that is uh, something for no matter what kind of car you have. I mean, if you're passionate about the car and for Keep whatever it, reason yeah. you lose the passion, just, just hang on to it. Just, I, I, you know, you'll, it'll come back around. Give it some time. Just don't get a Honda. Yeah. <laughs> we don't like those here. No. Too many people have them. <laughs> and Mustangs. So, Rich, you talked about it a little bit, but let's, uh, you know, if you have a specific calendar for this year, let's nail down what events we can come out and see you in action at in 2024. All right. So the, the problem with it is I'm still trying to find events. A lot of these no prep events, again, are for Mustangs. They're small tire events. They do not like all-wheel drive cars in yeah. these events. And the main reason is because they always lose to us. And I, I'm still trying to get a schedule together. There is an eighth-mile track up the block for me, about a half an hour, which is North, North Myrtle Beach Drag Strip, hmm. which I'm going to be probably doing testing and tuning at. And then Darlington Dragway, also in South Carolina. I'm going to be going there a few times to uh, also do quarter-mile testing and then if I can find any events, just always follow my social media, Race Car Richie on Instagram, Race Car Richie on Facebook, or Race Car Richie on YouTube. I will always post way, you know, a week or two in advance of where I will be if there is an event that pops up. I don't know about the uh, how far it is from you per se, but that uh, Rockingham Speedway in North Carolina has some usually has an IFO or two or a streetcar takeover. It's a pretty good track. Yeah, I think that uh, that, that place is definitely a couple of hours away. Um, again, I'm still new to this area, so I don't know any racetracks over here. Like, I sat down and I, I looked around a little bit, but it was so chaotic that at one point I was just like, I have to get the dust off this car and I just need to go somewhere. Yeah. And I found this event. I got lucky that they had, like, an unlimited class where anybody could kind of join, and I – said, hey, can I go? I was the only four-cylinder there and the only car that was all-wheel drive. <laughs> so everything else was Mustangs and Camaros. Oh, man. But I, I definitely will look up at, at Rockingham. I'm still going to look up some other events. It is hard because I have to rent a trailer like from U-Haul. Mm -hmm. So it gets a little sketchy where it's like, okay, I have to travel five hours to go somewhere, and then I have to leave the car on the trailer connected to the Jeep at a hotel. Yeah, that is sketchy. It's probably not going to be there in the morning. <laughs> yeah. A lot of good Mitsubishi guys up in the Rockingham area, though. Um, right, right. Know. But it's 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 the neighbors that might not be so. Uh, oh so yeah, cool. for sure. I'm you just know? saying, if you if you get in any uh, you know mechanical any issues, yeah. Yeah. Let's hope we don't get any of those. Listen, if it's one thing I've learned about the DSM community is a lot of the DSM guys they do all their own work and they are extremely nice and helpful people. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing I've learned about this community is, is it's, it's a very niche community and we're all here for each other. For sure. Yep. That, that is definitely what makes me love it the most. Yes. Very rarely are there corals within the community. And uh, even if there are, they get squashed pretty quickly. Yep. That's it. Well, Rich, you kind of uh, beat me to it, but let's go through it again of sure. where people can find and follow you on social media. All right, so my Facebook is Race Car Richie. My YouTube channel is also Race Car Richie. And my Instagram is, yet again, Race Car Richie. Um, and I would appreciate it if all you guys can subscribe to me, follow me. Uh, share my content, watch my content. It really will help me out. I would love to do YouTube full time with this, uh, you know, the vlogging and getting to race my car. That way I can get you guys amazing content and we can try to make the Mitsubishi community just a little bit stronger. 
Yeah. But definitely, as, as much Mitsubishi content as we can get, that's what we want. That's it. I, I, I try to be very informational with my videos, and, you know, a lot of people do appreciate that when they have a question or – if I say something in the video, they're like, oh, thanks. You know, I, that, that's good to know. Like, I never knew that about my car. And they, they own, you know, some type of an eclipse. Yeah, for sure. Well, Rich, I, I know we usually uh, kind of get towards the end here. But I, I got one more question for you. What is All it right. that, uh, I don't know, kind of got you into wanting to do YouTube videos and, and to make Mitsubishi or DSM content? Um, what, what was it that inspired that? Um, so that's actually a very good question. I never really thought about that before. Um, I guess it just comes to the fact of keeping track of the journey of the car and where it's been and kind of showing people like what you can do when you put a little bit of your mind towards it, you know, as far as whatever car you have doing some research and just, just getting at it you know and and i i'm my parents have always told me that i'm a very good teacher when it comes to explaining things or doing things so that's kind of you know where it kind of started was like let me make some educational videos let me put a little bit of a, a little bit of knowledge in some of these videos and uh I, I think that's just where the idea came from and then i just kind of started doing it yeah you know, I just kind of started making the videos. Now, don't get me wrong. They are not the best videos. They are not, you know, I, I, I don't sit down and screenplay these videos. I don't have, you know, like something to read off of. It's just, that's just what happens in the video, you know? I think people take for granted how difficult it is to make a YouTube video. How I mean, How many hours of footage you need to make a 10-minute video and then how long that 10-minute video takes to edit. Some of my videos were hours of footage yeah. that are only 10 minutes long and it took days to do. Yeah. And, you know, uh, another thing that just popped in my head about why I started the channel is go on to anybody listening to this, go on to YouTube. And I want anybody to find more than five YouTube, just five YouTube channels where the person is building an eclipse some type of race car, some type of anything, restoration on, on a Mitsubishi Eclipse that has more than 20,000 followers on it. It's, it's just, there's like, I think two guys. There's Miguel DSM and maybe some other guy. You know, it's just not a platform where there's a lot of stuff out there. And it's, it's, it's a good place to put information because there's not much out there. Right. But at the same time, if you were to stop doing YouTube videos tomorrow, people would be bitching on the internet saying, Nope. Oh man. I there's... don't think anybody. Yeah. I the... mean, no, honestly, honestly, I think, I think if, if, if I was as famous as Cletus or somebody or the boosted boys, it'd be a whole nother story. But because the Mitsubishi, I feel like is just such a niche place. Maybe if I, I think if I stopped doing YouTube videos, people might reach out to me, yeah, like on Facebook or something, say, hey, you know, how's everything going with the build? Haven't heard from me in a while. But it's not going to be like all 4,000 subscribers. Mm -hmm. Maybe just one or two, <laughs> you know? But at the same time, I feel like if you stopped making videos, people would get on one of the Facebook groups and be bitching about how there's no content on Facebook. Right, yes. If, if you were talking about that aspect, absolutely, because I see it all the time. I still see people you know, complaining and bitching that there's just, there's no information on how to build one of our transmissions. There's no, you know, th there's, there's no information on, on certain things on our vehicle, like how to take our transfer case apart and, and build it. Maybe there's one guy out there that had a video on it, you know, like, uh, what's that? Uh, Jaffro, Jaffro, yeah. he's got, he's got amazing videos on YouTube. That's, I learned a lot of stuff from him on, you know, on my car in the early days of, of building it of how to do these things and like IPT transmissions import performance transmissions. Those are like one of the original guys that messed with our transmissions that, that, you know, did, did the shift kits and figured out little, you know, quirks with our transmissions on removing seals and doing things certain ways to make it more reliable to shift better. But they're the only people that have information out there. And those videos are from 2007. Yep. And that's it. Nobody else makes videos. 
because all of us all of us Mitsubishi guys are so busy fixing our cars all the time we don't have time to make uh, contact <laughs> and the technology is moving so fast that videos from two yes. years ago now don't make sense yeah so I, I I would I think my setup my setup is definitely along the lines of like an older style setup there's not a lot of new technology in my car um, I would like that to change just because it'll make my car faster. It'll make it more efficient. It'll make it, you know, faster and possibly more reliable. For sure. I mean, even a standalone at all, just to protect, uh, you know, you having to build another engine, that that's that's worth it right there. Yeah. And, and you know, and parts are getting scarce. Like, if you have to find – I I have not seen in all my years, I have not seen anybody selling a 99 Mitsubishi block. You know, you – you see them from the six bolts up until about 97, but I've never seen anybody selling a 99 block before, yeah. you know? So even just, even a motor is, is getting hard to find. And especially locally, locally is almost impossible. Yep. That's a, that's a harsh reality that we're all living in, I guess. Yes. And if, if, if I had the team behind me, if, if I had some Mitsubishi friends down here, um, I would love to make way more content for the YouTube channel. I would, I would go to their houses. I would help them work on their cars and kind of like just go right in and say, look, this is how this system works. Um, you know, here's some beneficial videos or let's make some videos about this, uh, you know, and put on YouTube because there is nothing like that out right. there yeah. where I have some informational videos and yes, a lot of stuff does have information in it, but it's also the journey of my car. Mm -hmm. at the same time right. but i i want to have friends in it i want to have other people i go to the track with you know i met brian that was local to me and you know and i try to make videos about his car and, and the journey with him and how to fix things with his car and uh you know stuff of that nature that way now he has something he can look back on too because nobody was making content for him nobody was filming his car making passes or the the journey he was making with his car and that's all stuff he could be missing out on yeah for sure you know, I tried. I, I'm still trying. I haven't given up, but uh, I'm trying yeah, to do listen, these. Man, you've been killing it. You, I, I've been following you since 500 subscribers. I appreciate you know, it. Or followers on, on Instagram. I just realized today I was not following you on Facebook. So I'm sorry <laughs> about that. But no, it's on all Instagram, good. I, I found you when you first popped up, and you followed me, and I said, click right back. And that was uh, a couple of years ago, right? Like maybe two, three years ago? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I've been trying to do time. these these tech videos where, you know, we get kind of the more in detail, uh, you know, things, uh, not just Mitsubishi related, but car related in general. Like, you know, what, why is a wideband gauge useful or what does a fuel filter do? And I'm so surprised of how many people do not want to take part in these videos because they don't want to be wrong on the Internet. And it's, right. it's just so frustrating because yeah. I really thought – so many people ask, well, you know, we need more tech videos. Okay, well, I need somebody to be in them. Oh, no, thank you. Yeah. Listen, if, if, if you wanted to make a video with me, I'll be more than happy to have you down here. We'll make a killer video of everything in my car. We can do how to build a 1,000 – horse or what it takes to make a 1,000 horsepower in a Mitsubishi Eclipse, and that could be just the engine or how my fuel system works or – you know how my nitrous system works and that is actually all videos that i have planned in the future as yeah. well as uh you know as well as from zero miles an hour to 150 miles an hour in 10 minutes you know like, like a quick build video that everybody right. does but and, i mean I, you get it as a content creator how hard it is to it's just the time yeah because when you're starting off that's the hardest time you know my time passed living with my parents i don't have that luxury of having my car in the garage and I come home from school and work on it, you know, and can make videos. You know, I grew up with people in high school having sidekick cell phones and Nokia's, you know, and uh, fat farms for shoes. You know, that's, that's, that was my generation. And the YouTube thing really exploded over the last, I would say it's gotta be at least eight to nine years and it's it's just everybody wants to do now because they see the benefits so if i can take advantage of it and at the same time cure some itches of people that have questions about their car and about how things work then you know i think it's a job well done Heck yeah 
Well, Rich, at the end, I always give people a chance to give a thanks or a shout out to anybody who's helped them get where they are, get their car where it is. Is there anybody that you want to give a thanks or a shout out to? Um, I definitely want to give a huge shout out to Brian. He is going to be my right hand man in some questions that I had about things and, um, you know, some, some other, I guess, ideas of what to do with my car. Um, he has helped me plenty of times take the motor out, uh, you know, get it rebuilt, put it back in, you know, the, 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 the muscle sometimes behind some of my, uh, some of my jobs and everything. Um, but other than that, I mean, you're just talking maybe some people on some DSM tuners that have answered some questions. Uh, there is, I don't know, man. It's it's uh, it's kind of hard on that one because it's been such a long journey, and like I said, I'm kind of a loner on this. For sure, yeah. And on that, that's where it gets hard. I got you, but I mean, that, you know, like you said, you don't know people's names on DSM tuners. You just know their screen names, and and there's there's right, so much hidden information. To, you know, and, yeah. You know, I've I've asked, I've spoken to Aaron Gregory on. Uh, on Instagram before and I've asked him some questions about, you know, maybe the automatic transmission setup, but you know, if, uh, I, I went, I saw him at the track one time and shook his hand and everything and, and met him, but we don't have casual conversations about, you know, about things in day to day life. And, you know, like Rich Ong, the same thing. I met him a few times, um, but it's not really day to day conversations. I think it's uh, just, you know, I think you and I questions. met at uh, World Cup last year, if I remember yes, correctly. Yes, I think it was at the back of the track. Yeah, I was about I'm, to be I'm really embarrassed mistaken. if you said you weren't there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wish I could have been on the track. Well, that's you know that's that's a long term goal, right? Yep, that's it. One day. Yep. One day. All I got to do is get a billet block and a Ford eight inch rear end and. Send it. Make a launch at 40 pounds of boost and hit 90 by the end of the track, and I'll be doing sixes. There you go. Probably even more than that. <laughs> well, Rich, I, I can't thank you enough for coming on here, uh, especially last minute and telling your story, and I hope that we can get you some followers and some subscribers and you can keep kicking ass out there at the track and, uh, and you know, embarrassing, embarrassing those, those V8s at the uh, no prep events. Those big bullies. <laughs> But, uh, but, yeah, man, it was an absolute pleasure to be on here. It's always good talking about, you know, the car and my achievements and things like that and just the community. Um, and I, I can't wait until the next adventure with this thing, whether it blows up or it blows me out of the water, you know? For it's sure. Be one or the other. Either way, it'll be an adventure. Yes, absolutely. So I think we just need more nitrous. <laughs> That's always the answer. Yeah, it's just take the turbo out. We're just going to run two open bottles. That's it. <laughs> All but, right. Uh, yeah, man, it's, uh, I, I really do appreciate you having me on. That's definitely for sure. Absolutely. And I will talk to you soon. Yes, sir. Thank you for listening to the Mitsu Times podcast. Check out our Instagram and Facebook for daily updates. Get added to our list by going to mitsutimes.org and clicking submit a slip. Thank you to all of our sponsors. Thank you.